seen some failure modes, right? So you asked about RAM and SSD. We've seen mm -hmm. some failure modes with these NUCs. Let's start with the RAM. It's just your usual PC RAM. So it's not server RAM. It will not shout at you if it fails, right? Which means that if it fails, testing that gets really cumbersome. You're talking about a week of banging on the thing to figure it out, right? <laughs> so my recommendation there is get the most boring stick of RAM you can, right? If it says Samsung or Crucial on it and it's not overclocked and it doesn't have any RGBs, perfect. That's what you want, right? <laughs> For the SSDs, mostly most everything works. Um, we've seen some issues with ones that run very hot because these NUCs are so small. So if they get to 50C, 60C uh, Celsius, whatever that is in Fahrenheit, um, they start mm -hmm. really slowing down and they might not be able to keep up. And then the other thing is like the ultra, ultra budget stuff like PNY, whatever, you know, QLC, DRAM less, 100 bucks for two terabytes that stuff might not keep up. But if it's a reasonable mainstream brand and you know, if you Googled it a little and you found, okay, it's not gonna melt on me, it's gonna work just fine in there. I wanna put out something you said, you know, if, if something in this fails, if the motherboard fails, if the RAM fails, if the, these, your staking hardware is generally, uh, for lack of a better word, disposable. Um, now, you want it to run for a long time. You want it to run for a couple of years. But a lot of people put their heart and soul into their staking setup, and they're terrified for anything to go wrong with it. Um, and kind of the thing people need to understand is your validator node is really just um, something that uses your keys to do a job. And as long as you have your keys, you can always be down for a couple hours, a couple days, a week um, to put up a new system and keep it going. So Redundancy is great. Um, overkill hardware is, is fine if that's what you want to do. But it's important to think about these as disposable validating tools that you can easily rebuild and keep going if you need to. Going back cool. to the hardware talk specifically uh, in relation to the hard drive, uh, York, is there a reason why I would choose an SSD over a, over a spinning platter? Hey, you ask that in such a way as if you know there is. <laughs> <laughs> so good question, particularly in, in a NUC where I have to choose one or the other, right? Um, the clients we're using, uh, the execution client like a Geth or, or a Besu or whatever it might be, the consensus client to a lesser degree, like the Lighthouse, the takers of the world, they have a copy of the database of the chain on the drive, usually not a complete copy, but a fairly large copy. So you're talking 600 gig or so of data that's sloshing around there. And they're constantly reading and writing this because the, what is known as the blockchain state changes all the time. People send stuff around. So you may need to make changes to the database. All of which says, if this was a hard drive, it would have to, what's known as seek, move the head around. Um, 200 to 300 times per second. And it literally cannot do that. It can't. Hard drives top out as what's known as about 100 IOs per second. Um, SSDs can do thousands because it's, there, there's no spinning parts, no, dry, no, heart, no, no head needs to be moved, right? So it, it, they're a lot faster with seek times. And that's why we're using SSDs because they're the, the database behind that reads and writes tiny amounts of data hundreds of times a second, and the hard drives can't keep up. We actually have another tier. We have spinning platters, we have SSD, and then we have NVMe. Which um, is an SSD. Yes, it's an SSD interface, right? But is there a, because NVMe goes, it's like 5x faster, is there any difference for a home validator whether they choose a two and a half inch IDE SSD or a NVMe SSD? Probably not. Um, you're, you're just talking about really with NVMe and the SATA, you're talking about interfaces. The drives behind them, an NVMe drive can get a lot faster. So I've got one that can sync geth in like five hours, for example, right? Where my SATA takes 12 hours. Well, how often do I sync geth? That doesn't matter really, you know? And then the, the other truth as well is you can have SATA SSDs that are faster than NVMe SSDs, 
because what's in there also matters. It's not just how fast can the bus move the data, it's also how fast can the SSD itself handle the data. And in the end, the same thing is in there. There's a controller, there's some flash. Um, there might be, hopefully, some, some RAM as a, as a cache, right? But if there isn't, it gets slower. Um, the more bits you cram into that flash at the same time, this is where, where things like uh, tri-layer and quad-layer come in. The more bits you cram in, the slower the whole thing gets. Um, so yeah, I, long story short, no, either one is fine. Just get a reputable brand and you're good. Kind of touching on what Fizz was talking about before, you can get, you know, you can be as complex or as simple with these setups as, as you can, you know, you can have redundant power supplies and, and all the bells and whistles. But something I want to touch on specifically with the NUX is, you know, we, we touted them as, um, basically laptop hardware low power, like low consuming power. And I want to address this specifically because we get a lot of these questions with the e-stakers, especially for new solo stakers is, is that going to be enough? Not just today, but, but going forward, you know, two plus five years from now, is this something where I'm going to eventually, uh, it won't be powerful enough or, or whatever the causes may be, you know, what, what does that look like? We do a magic uh, eight ball screen share right quick. <laughs> you got one of those go shake it tell me what it says uh it says most likely I don't think okay I that. great i love it that's the right answer most likely yes that is exactly the right answer so we expect um that current uh requirements will not greatly increase um this, we expect this one from a technological perspective, but also because we know what all core devs and the Ethereum Foundation, so the people behind Ethereum, what they're thinking. And what they're thinking is we are not Solana. We do not want 500, 1,000, or whatever it is validators. We want hundreds of thousands. And that means it needs to run on consumer equipment and it needs to keep running on consumer equipment. And there's all kinds of technical things that are already being thought about, such as you know reducing the amount of, of data we're actually holding um, and, and making sure that computation isn't too complex uh, locally. And in the end, that's, that's the whole ethos of Ethereum, that anybody can run a node. So I expect that will continue and the NUC UI today will still validate happily five years from now. Awesome. Yep, I, I love hearing that and I love like, jamming that home you know you don't you don't need a supercharged double redundant power supply water cooled like gaming rig like you can we can totally do this on on the nut comfortably it uh, is however true that you get additional eth if you have many rgbs on it right yep that's yes. a great shout out you gotta have the rgbs mm, incentive <laughs> rewards i like those <laughs> super fizz can i ask you a leading question so if I can if I can if I can build this on this tiny little knock, right? Can I just do 250 gig of SSD or 500 gig of SSD? Why do I even need a full copy of the chain? Can't I just point it at Infura? Well, it's like I think Nolan might have a better. Did you were, were you in that conversation? Or I, I know Thorsten was. So no, no is is the answer. Um, you you do need to have a full copy of both the consensus layer chain that we call ETH2 and the execution layer chain that we call ETH1. Uh, and so there is still maybe a little bit of debate about the actual size of the drive that you need. Um, if you ask me, I'm going to say you need two terabytes. Um, other people may come up with slightly different standards. Right. Two is a conservative number. You'll be fine. With, with one or one and a half terabytes, you're, you're going to end up... Uh, if you use Geth, you're going to end up uh, having to compress that uh, every Regularly. weeks or months. Every uh, six months or so, yeah, not fun. Which it's it's no big deal. If if you're saving money uh, and you're still buying reputable hardware, then that that may be okay. Uh, but I really do prefer and feel more comfortable with two terabytes. You're also probably not running ten to a hundred validators or a thousand. <laughs> In that case, if you are, just spring for the two terabyte. 
And I'm guessing um, Mojo still has a bunch of questions um, regarding his um, shopping spree. Yes. So um, one of the questions that I have is, I guess we've also kind of been going over it already, but um, what does each part do or mean for staking in one of these machines? We've already kind of gone over what an SSD can do for these. It's essentially allowing you to make a copy of the beacon chain onto your onto your little machine here. But what do the other parts do, if you want to go over that for me? And why would they be important? You want to talk about the seven essential parts of a computer? I think that was asking. He's asking, <laughs> "What does a CPU do? What does well, RAM no, do?" Well, no, not 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 necessarily. But what I mean is, like, in terms of like staking, like what you know, you, you you've kind of described like what an SSD. Oh yeah, would, how much do, do I for, want for for staking? Yeah, like 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 yeah, why? Do I want sixteen why? gig of RAM? Do I want thirty two? Exactly. Do I want sixty four? Yeah. Should it be a terabyte of RAM? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's, that that's what I'm to trying take that to, one. to get towards. Yes. Sure. So um, let's talk about RAM. The and I. I, Thorsten can fill in with, with the more technical details. I'm always like a higher level kind of guy, but programs like uh, your consensus layer client and your execution layer client, uh, for simplicity, I'm gonna, let's call them uh, Nimbus and Geth. Um, they run in memory. Uh, so the, the computer doesn't access the hard drive every time it needs to, to run those. It, it kind of loads them in memory and they run from memory with what's called a memory footprint. So that application is going to be allocated an amount of memory uh, and that's what it runs with. And so we know that in general, most consensus and execution uh, layer combos take between eight and 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of what we want to, to leave them with. You, I don't think you really need more than 16, but you do need at least eight. Um, and the, while the benefits are, are minimal, um, do you do eight? I would not do eight because we've what done this in Rocket Pool yeah. with the RPIs and they yeah. start pruning Geth every one and a half months because they don't have enough RAM to keep the wow. database from growing. So okay. don't do eight. So you need 16 gigs of, of memory. I don't think you need 32. Um, I, I do run 32 just because I believe in overkill. Um, and you'll, you'll find that with me. We all have our own little style. Um, and my style is usually to throw more hardware at a problem than it needs. Um, our good friend Joe Clappis is a minimalist. He wants to run things on the absolute minimum of hardware just to, just because it's a challenge for him. Um, there's probably someone who's a rationalist. Nolan, are you a rationalist? Well, you have the same server I do. Um, yeah, so you might find someone who, who is like middle of the road, but in my experience, it's always better to have a little bit more than necessary um, so that you don't butt your head against this, like the same problem over and over. Uh, so you're going to need at least 16 gigs of memory. We talked about the size of the hard drive. Uh, the processor is actually very important. We haven't really addressed that yet. Um, one of the reasons I like modern NUCs is any NUC, any modern NUC you buy is going to be able to keep up with the chains. Uh, but there are some, some hardware or some CPU specifics. Um, and I don't, I, I just kind of buy big CPUs. I, I would say um, anything four core and reasonably recent is fine, period. Yeah. If Absolutely. you want to throw yeah. six or eight cores at it, go for it. You know, you don't need it, but it won't hurt you. Um, 32 gig of RAM um, can be useful. It does two things for you. One, you can run any combo of client you like. So if you're like, I really like Java, I want Teku and Besu and I want to give them big cash, that's going to fit into 16 just well, it'll definitely fit into 32, right? The other reason is if you're like, oh, I really love Geth. Yes, I know it's a majority client, but I want to run it, but I don't like that it's growing by like 13, 14 gig a, a week. Give it more cash, which you can do with 32 gig and it'll grow slower. So there's that, you know? And, and future-proofing. We, we have an idea what things are going to look like in a year, but none of us knows the reality of it. Um, and so buying a little... Uh, more hardware than you need is great for future proofing. Uh, and yeah. Back to CPU. Go ahead. You can, you can have, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say much about that. Only that um, if I future proof today and I need it in two years' time, in two years' time, I could have gotten twice half that for half the price. Yes, and totally accurate. Yeah. Um, and that's speaking of price, uh, we don't want to, 
I'm not trying to make you spend a lot of money, but don't skimp either. Um, you should plan to fairly spend about $1,000 on this setup. Um, now, yes, obviously, if, if you want to run it on a Pi, you can get away with running the whole thing for $250 or so. Um, but I really do encourage you, if, if you're a home enthusiast, if you're not trying to do really cool things, if you just want to make it work, then plan to budget about $1,000 for the setup. And remember, we're talking, I mean, in the case of Rocket Pool, it's like $50,000 worth of Ether here, you know? It's not, ETH isn't $300 anymore. So it makes sense to invest into a good setup versus it's trying to... Where we get the, the ominous music and we talk about ETH going back to $300 in 2022. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, it's back there now. <laughs> two years, two months later, we're back, we're back at 300 Who knew? Breckenridge, there you go. Since we had the shout out uh, to Joe earlier, I have to say, so people have been doing this on a Pi 4 with 8 gig of RAM and an external Samsung T5, specifically that one, because it seems to be the only drive actually fast enough that's external. And Joe has been working on making this a little faster. So he's got this idea where you take a Pi compute module, stick an NVMe SSD into it, um, and then that gets rid of the external. And just now in pre-order is something called the Rock 5 b which is 16 gig of RAM. And as big an SSD as you want, it takes regular full-size NVMe SSDs and, and still, you know, the Pi software on it, still an ARM processor, um, still 15 watts max, I think, of, 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 uh, of draw. So we, for we people who really love minimal, that's... that's, that's that's for fun. Um, That's for well, fun. I, I, That's I right. Know there, there are people who run it in production seriously, um, but but this is their kind of game. Um, That's and right. This isn't everyone's right. kind of game. So. If you're just trying to save money, that's not the route you want to go. No, it's not but for if, saving money. It's for being able to brag that your staking machine is literally powered by a banana. That's what it's yes. for. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's a caveat I wanted to mention about um, people buying Knox or like small factor PCs in general. Um, if you buy the bare bone units where you have to buy the RAM um, separately and the, the disk separately, make sure you, you check the compatibility with the different RAM modules and um, like some SSD sizes won't fit in the in those small boxes. Right? So if you, if you don't know about all of those stuff, um, Maybe create a list and send it to us. We'll, we'll check it for you. Make sure it fits uh, correctly and it's all compatible. And, and there I'll is come back a, to a tall and a short version. The tall version has a spot for a 2.5 inch SSD. Um, okay. And the short for instance, only yeah. has a slot for the NVMe stick. Um, now, when if you look at the specs, the hardware specs for this, it's going to say uh, like the maximum SSD size is something like a terabyte. Um, but we know through tons and tons of practice uh, that um, we, we, we haven't observed a limit to existing SSD sizes in these in these devices yet. There isn't one. Um, I, I do want to, uh, you know, once more say when you're choosing RAM, choose boring and reliable. You know, you don't want, in, as much as I giggle about RGBs to myself, you don't want the gamer RGBs. You don't want the overclock. You don't want the XMP stuff. All you're doing is you're introducing instability into your system. Just yeah, it, it's it's one of those things where you um, choose Corsair or something and sort by the highest rated and just go with it because that's uh, at least that's the way that I do it. Yeah, sure that works. You know, <laughs> or people have had good success with the uh, with the Samsung sticks because they're yes. well, they're boring. You know, you know they're 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 running at the rated speed. They're not trying to go fast, and that's all you need.